One of my main goals for 2023 is to work on my art skills, and there is one exercise that has been absolutely instrumental in helping me achieve that. A master's study is a fairly straightforward exercise where you pick a painting by an artist you admire and do your best to recreate it as faithfully as possible. That sounds really simple and it completely undersells how valuable of an experience this is. There is something extremely educational and informative about studying an existing work of art rather than a reference. References teach you about the physical world, about structure and anatomy, but art teaches you about composition, about color theory, brushwork, rendering versus articulating, and overall, I find it to be, typically, a far more valuable experience than studying a reference. The painting that I'm studying today is Back from the Ocean by Ben Foster. Ben Foster was an American tonalist painter, and this painting is from 1910. American tonalism is this movement that was really popular from about 1880 to 1920, and this means that it came after the Impressionists, but before modern art as we know it today. The tonalists really take all of the lessons learned about color and light by the Impressionists and push it in a much more subdued direction. Tonalist paintings are more mysterious, they're kind of subdued, they're very atmospheric and almost dreamlike at times. They're often painted at very dramatic points of day where the light is just really magical. Think sunrise, sunset, golden hour. Overall, Tonalist paintings have this very interesting magic to them that I've just been thoroughly entranced by over the past couple of months. I've been spending a lot of time studying a history of American tonalism, Crucible of American Modernism, the third edition by David A. Cleveland, which is an absolute murder weapon of a book. It is enormous, like it's one hell of a paperweight. But in it, he just dissects tonalism so thoroughly, talks for ages about the history of it, and reading this has introduced me to a ton of lesser-known artists that I never would have known about before. I'm an artist who's mostly self-taught, so building my awareness of art history is incredibly important and not a thing that I would have probably found out by myself. So this book has just been incredibly influential to me. I started out this study the way that I start out most of my paintings, with a very loose sketch. For this sketch, I'm using Vasari oil paints. This is the color shale, and for the sky, I'm using the color orchid. And I'm just trying to establish the main shapes going on, the main value structure of the painting, trying to understand where the midtones and the shadows are located. So I have this very solid foundation to work from when I do go full color. I like establishing the darks right away here, just because this painting is very low contrast. The value range of this painting is pretty minimal. And you'll notice in my final version that my version of this painting is much more bright, much more full contrast than the original. I don't know if that was like deliberate on my part, but either way it happened. This sketch is really just there for me to kind of understand where the painting is going. I often like to keep my work fairly loose, or at least that's how I aspire my paintings to look like. And having this very kind of purpley, desaturated, dark sketch really made the green of the grass pop a ton more when I began to add that in. Throughout this entire process, I'll be using mostly oil paints from this brand called Vasari. These oil paints are very desaturated. They're very kind of gray. I'm not mixing my colors from primary colors. I'm not trying to go for a limited palette. I am going just like using colors out of the tube, which some of you might find just completely antithetical to everything that you've known about art, but I find it really useful for me. I'm working with Rosemary & Co brushes and I'm painting on oil painting paper by I think this brand called Claire Fontaine. And I'll list out all of my palette colors and all of my materials in the description if you wanna check that out. It really took me quite a lot of time to nail the lower half of this painting, like my sketch, trying to get that grassy part just right. 
and I still think it's probably the weakest part of this painting overall. In these initial stages of a master study, I do spend a lot of time glancing between the reference and my canvas, trying to constantly compare these two versions and figure out any areas requiring adjustments. There is a lot of changes going on in the first part of this process, mostly because my drawing skills are not super accurate at the moment or like I'm working on it, but we're still getting there, you know? And especially when it comes to the lower half of this painting, there was just a lot that I had to fix. The shapes of those like dry patches of sandy soil took me a few tries to get right. And I still know for sure that they're not anywhere close to being perfect. That being said though, I'm really proud of the way this painting came out in the process. I have this horrible tendency to overwork my paintings overwork them to death, especially when it comes to my original work. And trying to maintain the vibrant, charismatic looseness of the original required a lot of focus on my part. And I found myself constantly taking breaks in this painting process, constantly turning the camera off, like making dinner, doing something else for a couple of hours, and then looking at it some more and coming back to it. I still worked mostly wet and wet, but really taking my time and analyzing it very often, I think helped me just maintain that level of looseness that really entranced me in the original to begin with. My version of this painting is significantly brighter. It has more contrast and I made the sky much more saturated. Initially, my version was pretty purple just because I didn't nail the color mixing quite right. And then I pushed it to more of a pink to kind of complement the eggplant colored shadows. The shadows I painted using Burnt Carmine by Rembrandt Oils, so it's not Vasari. The more that I played around with the pink sky, the more I was like, I think I like this better than the original, and so I kept it as is. I think it really ties the whole painting together, and I tried to add in some of the sky colors to the grassy areas. So I used that eggplant burnt carmine kind of color for the shadows in the grass areas and the rocks, and I even added some of the Vasari silver point, that kind of grayish blue that I used for the sky also in the grass areas as a little bit of like a pop of color here and there. And I think it really helps tie the entire painting together and unify the sky and the grass areas because they are very different. And whenever you have a composition like this with sky, mountain, grass, it's very easy to inadvertently create like a flag <laughs> You know, like those like just three horizontal stripes of color. And that was something that I really, really wanted to avoid. So I tried to break it up and just make them more unified however I could. A quick and dirty way to do this, of course, is to reuse colors. So I tried to do that fairly often. One area that I had a ton of fun with in this process was this like sandy, rocky area like this. I don't know if it's like a hill or what it is, but anyway, I had a blast. I've never painted like a rocky hill quite like this one before, and it was really exciting. In the original, the kind of darker rocky areas of this like sandy hill are not very well rendered or established. It's just kind of like a block of dark shadowy color, but there were all of these rocks around the middle of this painting and I wanted to kind of unify it a little bit more and break up those rocky areas. So I turned that dark massy shape in this sandy hill and to more of a rocky outcropping. And I feel like it kind of ties that painting a little bit together more. Ben Foster is of course a far more talented artist than I am. I'm just doing my own personal spin on his painting and I don't know, filtering it through my own brain and just kind of adding stuff that I feel like improves it from my perspective. There are tons of areas in this painting that I think could be vastly improved, right? Like I think the grass areas are definitely a weak point. I think that the dry sandy patches in that grass area, those were so, so hard for me to get right. And I still just like know for an absolute fact that they're not even anywhere close to approaching being perfect. So if I ever do a study of this painting again, I will definitely pay more attention to that particular area. But overall, I just, I learned so much from this process. I learned to really take my time with these paintings, to just step back and analyze things often. And I'm really excited to try and find a similar reference 
and incorporate the lessons that I learned through this process on an original painting. I really want to make these master studies a very crucial part of my creative practice, a habit that I do often, something that I just turn to all the time. And I'm not sure how many I want to complete this year, but I think it'd be really cool to do just an entire ongoing series of videos just like this one. So if that is a thing that you guys are interested in, consider subscribing right now. This is actually the first video on this channel. If you are totally new here and you have no idea who I am, hi, I'm Kelsey. I have a main channel here on YouTube with about 150K subscribers right now that mostly talks about marketing and business for artists. And historically, Whenever I posted painting processes or studio vlogs on my main channel, they never performed well. So I decided to kind of split things up a little bit and post those videos on this channel now. So yeah, that's the, the elevator pitch, I guess. My takeaways for this painting were that I definitely want to use purple for shadows much more. I also really loved using the Vasari oil paints throughout this entire process. There were so many points where having those pre-mixed convenience colors when it came to the sandy soil, when it came to the grass, when it came to getting that nice gray blue for the sky came in just absolutely clutch. It was just so convenient to have those there. I really in particular loved cedar, jasper, shiprock, and French anthracite gray. French anthracite gray is this gorgeous, nice, warm gray color. It's not too warm so as to be like a brown, but it really has just like this richness to it that's so hard for me to describe, but was so, so pretty. And I just, I can't wait to use these paints more in my original work and just in my creative practice in general. If you guys would like to see a dedicated review video of these paints, I would be more than happy to do that. They were a blast to work with. They are, I think, on the more expensive side of professional artist quality oil paints, but so so, so worth it. Oh my God. Usually I paint using Gamblin oil paints, but getting my hands on these was so, so nice. It was definitely a splurge, but I would recommend. And another takeaway that I had was that I feel pretty good about my color theory instincts now. I feel like I have a very good understanding of what it takes to tie a painting together color theory wise and how to really unify a composition. So I recommend this. This exercise was so, so valuable. Let me know what paintings you guys want to study down below, where you want to take your art, and what painting you think that I should look at next. I learned so much from this painting, and I hope that you enjoyed the process. This is my cat, Spooky. Say hi, Spooky. I guess you don't get a greeting. Um, if you enjoyed this process, consider subscribing, checking out my main channel. This is the very first video on the second channel and I really wanna do a series of these master studies. I wanted to share the journey of developing my skills with you guys. And I'm sure that Spooky will be there too because he just can't help himself. He can't stay away. Isn't that right? Do you wanna say hello? Well, <laughs> that's it for me. See you guys in the next one, bye.